dear students today we are going to discuss the important aspect of the district administration in india the institution of the district collector was created more than 246 years ago in 1772 is one of the most significant institutions bequeathed by the colonial rulers to independent india's public administration system he that is the collector is the highest functionary of the district administration in the country several epithets are used to describe this institution like annadata captain of the team eyes and ears of the government or some for the common descriptions collector is also described as the kingpin of the district administration the keystone of the arc of district administration the area specialist and more recently in more benevolent terms as friend philosopher and guide advisor educator and helper the main spring of development and so on even after independence he continues to occupy a pre eminent position at the district level and is the key functionary of the state government lord wavell once stated that the english should be remembered not by this institution or that by the ideals left behind in the form of the office of the district collector a number of reforms and reorganizations that were effected in india's public administrative system both before and after independence did not affect the institution of collector for example the setting of panchayati raj wherein democratic institutions were established at the district level and below also did not reduce the importance of significance of this office on the other hand it added the power role as well as the prestige to this institution The office of the district collector in India has a long history. Its origin is related to the concept of a territorial unit of administration. During the Mauryan period, the kingdom was divided into convenient territorial units and each unit was placed under the official known as rajuka. Though they were essentially revenue officers, they exercised judicial functions also. Rajukas collected land revenue, maintained roads, promoted trade and industry and carried out public works like irrigation during the gupta period they were called the vaishyapati who were heads of vaishyas which are equivalent to the modern districts the vaishyapati was responsible for the general administration including collection of taxes and other revenues they also commanded military force to maintain law and order in the vaishya the mogul rulers followed the system and administration of hindu kings under the mogal system the sarkar which is comparable to modern district and three officers namely amal gauzer amir jauzi and fauzdar the amal gauzer was the principal revenue functionary of the sarkar and exercised certain administrative functions like punishing the robbers and some quasi judicial functions like settlement of disputed claims of land however during the mogal period fauzdar enjoyed a dominant position in the district administration thus we find before the advent of the british there were always some territorial divisions and officers of the divisions were responsible for realization of land revenue these revenue officials were generally invested with several powers and functions it was no doubt considered a feudal form of territorial organization the territorial gradation of administrative areas more or less remained the same notwithstanding the changes that were brought about in the system by british the british build on the oriental system and establish the present system of field administration the creation of a district as a unit of administration and the appointment of the district collector as head of district administration laid the foundations of stable administration in india granting of diwani that is civil administration in bengal bihar and orissa to the east india company in 1765 marks the beginning of the british revenue administration in india in 1769 the company launched a scheme of english supervision over the local revenue collecting institutions east india company appointed cabinet servants as supervisors during 1769 to 70 in the districts of the diwani provinces the supervisors were expected to report produce and capacity of the lands the amount of revenues and other taxes levied manner of collection etc they were expected not only to be concerned with the revenue collection but also to have an overall knowledge of all the factors that affected the district but the system failed 
and the company decided in 1772 to take over the entire executive management of public revenues. Accordingly, Warren Hastings issued a proclamation on May 11, 1772 and the supervisors were appointed as collectors. Thus, the institution of collector was created for the first time in 1772 during the period of Warren Hastings. From then onwards, collection of revenue became the most important duty of companies' civil servants. The Office of District Collector thus became an important institution of the British local administration in the country. They were entrusted with the executive investigation. From then onwards, the collector's role has gone through several changes, periods of strength, neglect, etc. By the time India gained independence, the district collector had become an important functionary heading the district administration. Districts in India, national perspective. In India, there is no uniformity in the size of states either in population or area or in any other indicator. Some states are larger than several countries of world creating problems of governance. For example, the present Uttar Pradesh is larger than countries like Brazil, Bangladesh, Japan, etc. This apart from political reasons is a major factor in the demand for new states and this is a continuing demand ever since states reorganization in 1956. The demands for Vidarbha and Maharashtra, Bodo land in Assam, Gurkha land in West Bengal, Haritha Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, etc. are cases in point. The political parties have always been fominating these demands. Similarly, there are wide variations in India, districts in India, which evolved over centuries and decades in area and population. For example, the Thane district in Maharashtra, North 24 Paraganas in West Bengal with over 10 million population as per census, 2011 resemble not only states in the country, but even countries of the world. It is these variations that is resulting in the demand for smaller administrative units like districts to bring the people closer to the administration. District of unmanageable size. In 2011, as per the census, there were 640 districts in India. As per the latest reports in 2016, there are 687 districts an increase of 47 over 2011. Thane district in Maharashtra was the most populous district in India with 1 crore 10 lakh 54,131 population and the least population is Upper Dibang Valley in Arunachal Pradesh with 8,004. The second most populous district in India is North 24 Praganas in West Bengal with 1 crore 82,852. In 2014, Thane district was bifurcated into Thane and Palghar, but even after bifurcation, Thane has a population of 80,70,032. After Thane is bifurcation, North 24 Paragana is the most populous district in the country. Thane district, after reorganization, has seven talukas, and Thane taluka has a population of 37,87,036, almost double the national average. In terms of area, Kutch districts in Gujarat is the largest with 45,650 kilometers and the smallest is the Mahe in Puducherry with 8.7 kilometers. No doubt, there many have been many a change over time. As the districts are formed at different points of a time based on different consideration, there is uneven distribution of population between districts within the state across the country and the problems become complex with population growth in some districts, particularly urban and economic. In 2011, average district population in the country was 1.9 million. In 2011, about 50% of the nation's population was concentrated only in 148 of the 640 districts. 31 new districts were formed in 2016 in Arunachal Pradesh, West Bengal and Telangana. The office of the district collector is an important institution bequeathed by the British rulers to the Indian administrative system. He performs traditional revenue functions as well as development functions. Throughout the country, the power and functions of the collector more or less remain the same. Though there are variations in matters of detail, broadly the collector performs the following traditional functions via as the district collector. 1. Posting, transfers and sanctioning leaves of the gazetted officers within the district. 
postings, transfers and leave of the naib tahsildars and tahsildars, appointing the punishing authority in respect of ministerial and inferior servants of collectorate and tahsil staff and other allied offices, dealing with pension cases of district staff, acting as a controlling, drawing and disbursing officer of the district staff, submitting annual budget estimates, preparing estimates of works in respect of revenue, buildings and responsibility for maintenance of all government buildings under the charge of the revenue department, in charge of the treasury, district stamp officer and responsible for verification of the security of government treasurer, chairman, president of various local institutions, some are members of regional transport authority, roadways advisory committees, etc., issuing tentative tour programs of ministers and VIPs, acting as a protocol officer in the district, arranging for the stay of VIPs at circuit houses or other inspection houses, compiling and submitting annual administrative report of the district, attending to the work of inquiries relating to character verifications, supervising the proper conduct of civil suits in which the state is a party, appointing government councils and panels of lawyers in district, countersigning fee bills of district government councils, making inquiries relating to the issue of certificates to homeopaths and correspondence regarding registration and enrollment, countersigning the grants in aid bills for various educational institutions, sale of excise of shops, recovery of proper suit dues and deficit court fees under the Stamp Act, interviewing the members of the public and officials, making inquiries regarding grant of financial aid to the cadres as well as to the scholars applying for scholarships, technical education loans, etc., acting as the principal agency of government in matters of general administration in the district, looking after the interest of the government in the district, looking after the interest of the government in general, responsible for proper implementation of government orders, training junior officers, procedures and administrative works as well as in personal conduct and behavior, ensuring that public grievances against the administration in the district are properly and effectively dealt with, affecting coordination in the work of all the district level officers and presiding over the district plan implementation committee. As a head of a revenue, collector of a land revenue, collection of canal dues, collection of other government dues, distribution of Takavi loans, recover of Takavi dues, national calamities assessment of losses to crop and recommendations of relief, distribution of distress Takavi, relief of fire sufferers, all matters relating to the land records, control over land records and establishment, collecting and furnishing multifarious agrarian statistics regarding rainfall, crop, etc., land acquisition work, supervision of treasury and sub-treasuries, sanctioning land revenue assignment, payment of jamindari abolition, compensation and rehabilitation grant, assessment and realization of agricultural income tax, as ex officio deputy director of consolidation of holdings, hearing appeal against the orders of the lower authorities, taking relief measures in case of scarcity conditions caused by natural calamities like fire, drought, flood, water logging, excessive rains, etc., enforcement of the Stamp Act, management of government estates, etc. As a district magistrate, control and supervision of the subordinate magistracy to order magisterial postings during festivals, promulgation of orders whenever there is any danger of breach, public peace and tranquility, disposal of all the petitions and miscellaneous general complaints received from government and others, making jail inspections and expeditious disposal of cases of under trial prisoners, grant of superior classes to prisoners, premature release of prisoners, release of prisoners on parole, dealing with mercy petitions from prisoners, as the head of criminal administration of the district controlling and directing the action of the police, submitting an annual criminal report to the government, appointment and punishment of village chokidars, inspections of police stations once a year, sanctioning expunction of a crime from the crime register, recovery of repatriation charges, accidents, 
payments under the Workmen's Compensation Act, labor problems, strikes, etc., recovery of cases, prosecution under Sugar Factories Control Act, infringements of the Trademark Act, sanction of temporary electric connections including enquiries regarding breach, grant and cancellation of many kinds of licenses, supervision over supply office and rent control and eviction officer under Rent Control Act and supply matters, supervision and control over local bodies, municipal boards, notified areas, town areas and channel for correspondence, enforcement of the cinema, entertainment and betting tax act, recommendations for the issue of passports and visas, supervision of the work of probation officers, making of reception orders for lawn ticks, enforcement of the press act and disposal of declaration in respect of the press and newspapers, administration of nozzle lands, recommendations of schemes for the development of forest, issue of permits for the cutting of trees, control and supervision of election work in the district, issue of certificates for domical, scheduled and backward classes, guardianship of political sufferers, etc., providing for affixation of poles, etc., on private lands or building for conveyance of electronic current. The collector is the returning officer for elections to the parliamentary and Vidhan Sabha constituencies and has the responsibility of coordination of election work at the district level. As the district census officer, as the district census officer, the collector is responsible for conduct of census operations once in 10 years. This work entails more elaborate arrangements than elections. He appoints enumerator, provides for their training and arranges timely supply of forms, etc. As the coordinator of development functions, since independence, the nature and scope of governmental functions have increased. The government is striving to achieve socio-economic justice. The realization of these twofold objective has led the government to perform developmental functions. With the increasing activities undertaken by the government, this function of the collector has been gaining more and more importance. The prevailing practice in many states at present is to make the district collector the coordinator of developmental functions. The collector being the final authority in the district is in a better position to get the cooperation of all district functionaries. Therefore, he is in a better position to look after the developmental functions in the district. In agricultural development programs, a large number of agencies were required to supply inputs wisely. Therefore, coordination is required to make sure that the necessary inputs are available to the farmers at proper time. Moreover, there are a number of special programs like Integrated Rural Development Program, Drought Prone Areas Program, Desert Development Program, Rural Landless Employment Guarantee Program, National Rural Employment Program, Training and Visit System, GRY, Prime Minister's Employment Program, etc. There is hardly any program which does not involve the land acquisition, land management, re regularization of the sale and purchase of land, etc. A number of coordination committees are functioning for implementation of various programs under the district collector to ensure successful implementation of different development programs. Even the above list is formidable as it looks, leaves many things unsaid. In fact, functions not specifically allotted to any officer by any department, but which nonetheless are required to be performed at the district level, devolve naturally on the collector. All this obviously entails an enormous amount of work for the district collector. Changing role of the district collector. The role of the collector is changing at a fast pace due to the various welfare schemes. Today his judicial role is no longer considered important. In fact, it has been reduced to a minimum and the developmental role has been given the paramount importance. The collector as the head of the district administration is closely connected with the development programs and has acquired a key position working as a guide and philosopher. Management of the public distribution system is considered to be one of the most important roles of a collector today. Recommendations of the Administrative Reforms Commission. The Administrative Reform Commission also made some recommendations on district administration. The main recommendations are all. A. In the states where the judicial work of the collector has not yet been transferred to the judiciary, steps may be taken to have it so transferred. 
in those states in which only a partial transfer of judicial work has taken place, steps may be taken to make the transfer complete. B. The district administration should be divided into two sectors, one concerned with regulatory functions and the other with the development functions. The district collector should be the head of the former and the Panchayati Raj administration should have the responsibility for the later. The district collector and president of the Jilla Parishad should meet at periodic intervals to resolve matters calling for coordination between the regulatory and developmental administration. This procedure should be given official recognition in the legislation dealing with the Panchayati Raj. The collector and the district magistrate as the head of the regulatory administration in the district should exercise general supervisory control over the police organizations in the district. Except in an emergency, he should not interfere with the internal working of the police administration. In the day-to-day -day work of the police organization and with the regard to routine matters like postings and transfers, the district superintendent of police should have full control. The collector should annually record his views on the performance of the district superintendent of police. It should not normally be necessary for the collector or any other district officer to wait upon a visiting dignitary. The collector should spend a prescribed minimum number of days on tour with night halls in the camp. The tour should be utilized among other things for the redress of public grievances on the spot wherever possible. There should be only two administrative units whose heads are invested with powers of decision making in the district administration, one in Tahasil and the other in the headquarters of the district. Other officers at district level. The other district level officers are the district and session judge, civil surgeon or chief medical officer, superintendent of police, executive engineer of PWD, district education officer, district food and supply officer, district social welfare officers, and district developments officers, etc. They are important officers of their concerned departments. All these officers have technical control and the supervision over their own departments. The district collector supervises and coordinates their work. These officers are obliged to inform the collector about their activities and report to him immediately on any serious incident which is likely to disturb law and order. In conclusion, it can be said without any iota of doubt that the office of the district collector will remain very important in the years to come in spite of the introduction of Panchayat Raj institutions through democratic decentralization, 73rd and 74th amendments to the constitutions empowering the Panchayat and municipal institutions. The collector will remain the eyes and ears of the state government and also as the king at the district level, although he is only a generalist administrator. Administrative reforms at the district level did not affect his institution and it is still a dream job for many civil servants. A lot of authority and prestige is attached with it. Mm -hmm.